Hey, uh, can I get an order of uh, boneless chicken wings? Here you go. <laughs> Excuse me, those are chicken tenders, not boneless wings. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll fix that right away. Here they are, one plate of nice boneless chicken wings. Now you're just giving me chicken nuggets. Are you sure? They, they certainly look like boneless chicken. I, I mean, yes, that is correct, but they're not wings. You know, notice that this one is shaped kind of like a blob and this one is more of a boot. So you want them how exactly? <sighs> uh, okay, uh, still boneless and, and still kind of like a chicken blob, just not like the flat pressed blob, you know? What you're describing is a chicken tender, sir. N no, it's a, it's a wing, it's a, it's a bone. Boneless wing, a chicken blob that looks like a bite-sized blob of chicken. Chicken nuggets? You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna get the salad. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the show where no question is too saucy. Today we're here to talk about the unnatural concoction that is the boneless chicken wing. Just the very name of this thing seems like it should be a contradiction. Unless, of course, there are farms out there that are growing genetically mutant chickens without bones. No, the reality of this situation is actually dressed in significantly less nightmare fuel. Boneless chicken wings are just chicken breast chunks that have been breaded, fried, and then tossed in a sauce. But that right there should already be setting off some alarm bells. They're branded as wings, and yet they have neither wing meat nor the bone that would allow this hypothetical chicken to fly. So really, these saucy nugs are just failing the definition of a wing in basically every way that you can. And this confusion recently has led itself to a full-blown mother cluckin' lawsuit. A man in Chicago has called foul on the whole operation, and has taken the restaurant chain Buffalo Wild Wings to court in a classic case of misleading advertising. According to his official complaint, quote, specifically the name and description of the products as boneless wings leads a reasonable consumer to believe the products are actually chicken wings. So that right there is the legal question that we aim to answer today. What's the buffalo lowdown on this barbecue showdown? Is there an actual case here? And really, what is the deal with boneless wings? Could this case be the death blow to a favorite snack category on game day? Or is this whole legal battle a mango habanero no-go? Whew, I'm working hard to make that one work. I am not proud. Not particularly ashamed either, but certainly not proud of that one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to hop into the world of weird food laws to see what gets spit out the other side. On the face of it, it seems like this should be a pretty open and shut case. Plenty of food items have themselves non-literal names. Ants on a log? Just a bunch of raisins on celery. It's not a bunch of insects on a stick. If you order sweetbreads expecting some sort of dessert, you are in for a rude awakening. What you're actually ordering is the thymus gland of an animal. Spotted dick? That is thankfully not what you're imagining. It's just the name of a British steamed pudding. The list can nearly be endless. Chinese gooseberries aren't from China, Rocky Mountain oysters are definitely not seafood, and don't even get me started on the web of lies that is the so-called French fry. In fact, as news of the latest lawsuit spread, Buffalo Wild Wings actually clapped back on Twitter. Uh, whatever that platform is now. Anyway, quote, It's true, our boneless wings are all white meat chicken, our hamburgers contain no ham, our buffalo wings are 0% buffalo. I gotta say, point to the B-dubs there. Nobody's bringing a lawsuit on any of those grounds, so why should this one be any different? So with that pretty well established, does this case have any sort of legal standing? Well, if the peckish plaintiff actually wants to prove that Buffalo Wild Wings is promoting legally problematic poultry, he'll need to persuade the court in three primary points. First, and most obviously, misleading advertising. The allegation is that Buffalo Wild Wings, in referring to their breaded breast bits as boneless wings, is actually misleading consumers. And our plaintiff needs to argue that a reasonable consumer would be led to believe that boneless wings are actually made from the wing meat of a chicken. The second legal point they need to contend with is industry standards and practices. Basically, the argument here is that if everyone in the industry is selling fried breast meat as boneless wings, then Buffalo Wild Wings is just following the standard way of labeling this particular food item. Last, but certainly not least, in order for the lawsuit to get off the ground, the plaintiff needs to prove specificity of harm, proving that the customers of Buffalo Wild Wings have actually suffered financial injury due to its false advertising. So let's just break it all down point by point to see who's cock of the walk and who's left laying an egg. First, let's talk about misleading advertising. Different cuts of meat do matter. For example, not all steak are created equally. A juicy, well-marbled ribeye steak cut from the rib section of the cow near the short loin is gonna cost more than a sirloin steak, one that's cut from the meat closer to the rump. That cut right back there has less marbling, and as a result, it's less desirable and thereby less expensive. And just like how not all cuts of steak are created and priced equally, not all chicken bits are priced the same either. You might have noticed this at the supermarket, where chicken breast meat commands a higher price than chicken thighs or drumsticks. And historically, wings were considered to be among the least desirable 
whole and therefore cheapest parts of the chicken. They have themselves less meat than all the other parts. They're also full of cartilage and a higher fat content, which makes them less desirable to eat. They're also just less versatile. If you do a lot of cooking at home, you probably notice that there's a lot more recipes out there that call for chicken breast than chicken wing. Well, that's because historically all you could really do with a wing was just chuck it into a pot and make some soup out of it. That's usually what you do with the junk parts of meat that nobody wants, and so that's what you did to make the most out of your wings. But all of that started to change in the 1960s with the invention of the buffalo wing. Now, the dish's actual origins are still disputed, but supposedly they were first served at a bar in Buffalo, New York, when the two owners were surprised by their son and his friends visiting home from college. They had to feed this ravenous horde of boys, but the grocery store was closed. So the bar owners took some of their junk chicken from the back, the wings, and deep fried them before drenching them in sauce. Little did they realize at the time that this was a guaranteed way to make any food more desirable to the American college student and drunken sports fans, and the rest is history. And that right there is the basis of the entire lawsuit. The story, as the plaintiff tells it, is that in January of 2023, he visited a Buffalo Wild Wings and ordered a plate of boneless wings, thinking, yeah, cool, I'm gonna get myself a bunch of sauced wing meat with the bones already removed, only to then be shocked by what he was actually served, a bunch of breast meat. So that's just one person, but could any reasonable consumer actually run into the same problem? As it turns out, yeah. Deboned chicken wings are in fact a thing. There are numerous video tutorials right here on YouTube that show you exactly how to debone wings for anyone who wants the meat that's higher in fat content and with more skin, but doesn't want the bone inside. So it really doesn't seem all that outlandish to assume that if a restaurant wanted to serve actual factual deboned wings, they might do it by labeling it accurately as a boneless wing. Point number one to the plaintiff. Question number two, what is the industry standard here? At a certain point, these kinds of colloquial labels for food just get accepted as common usage, which is the defense that you'd think Buffalo Wild Wings is using here. Everyone else calls them this name, why single us out? Except there's a problem with that logic. You see, everyone doesn't call them boneless chicken wings. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of places that do. Wingstop, a chain with over 1,400 locations, it sells boneless wings that are breaded breast meat bathed in sauce. Applebee's, over 1,700 locations, it has itself an appetizer menu that clearly advertises boneless wings, yet despite the name, they are not wings, they are breaded boneless breast meat tossed in sauce. Ditto for Chili's and its 1,600 locations, as well as TGI Fridays and its 600. In total, with just that quick list right there, that represents 5,000 eateries that have all agreed to use the words boneless wings to represent breast meat. It's an impressive number, and it shows just how popular using this misleading name actually is. However, several prominent dining chains, possibly fearing exactly this sort of lawsuit, have made it a deliberate point to not call these boneless chicken chunks boneless wings. Papa John's has itself over 3,000 locations, and they call their boneless bites chicken poppers. Domino's, far less creative in naming their deboned delights, simply calling them boneless chicken. And Domino's is a powerhouse in this world, with nearly 7,000 locations in the U.S. alone, almost 20,000 worldwide. So we're talking about 5,000 locations using the phrase boneless wings versus 23,000 using any other term. Now, granted, this isn't an exhaustive calculation, but it shows the battle here isn't as clear-cut as you might assume. The majority seem to opt for not using the words boneless wings as the preferred term, because again, it is just not factually true. Although I gotta say, to add another wrinkle to this debate, boneless wings are not, as the lawsuit claims, just chicken nuggets with sauce added. Boneless wing is generally understood to be a single intact piece of chicken meat that gets breaded up and then fried. A chicken nugget, on the other hand, is just ground up bits that could honestly come from any part of the chicken. In fact, according to one study published in the American Journal of Medicine, sometimes less than half the chicken in a fast food nugget is actual muscle. Most of it's a mix of fat, cartilage, and tiny little ground up bits of bone matter. Mmm, 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 tasty. And to think that my kid will eat that, but not a vegetable. In fact, the boneless wing actually has more in common with a chicken tender than anything else. Those two are not nuggets. Instead, they're fried chicken pieces that are taken specifically from the chicken's tenderloin. Truly, the only difference is that one is from a tenderloin and the other, the boneless wing, is ironically taken from the breast. It's confusing though, right? So really, the lawsuit seems to have more weight than you'd initially expect. Which brings us then to point number three, financial harm done to consumers. When it comes to harm done to consumers, it can mean something as simple as giving someone an item that's inferior and cheaper compared to what's being advertised. An obvious case of this would be someone labeling a product as being made with 18 karat gold when it's only made of 14 karat gold. Or in this case, labeling a product as being made with boneless wing meat and instead serving up a cheaper cut of meat instead. So, is there enough financial harm here to merit a case? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the chicken wing was historically the junk part of the chicken. Emphasis on historically, though. As the wing trend caught on in the 80s with the advent of restaurants like Hooters and Buffalo Wild Wings, new competing flavors entered the scene, propelling these once blah bits to new levels of popularity. And as the popularity of the chicken wing grew, demand grew alongside it, which also means higher price tags. In fact, a 2019 USDA report found that chicken wings actually became more expensive 
expensive per pound than chicken breast, usually considered to be the most desirable cut of chicken meat. In short, Buffalo Wild Wings and others could be shaving cents off the dollar by having breast meat subbing in for their wing meat, or at least they could be if chicken wings were consistently more expensive than breast meat. And the fact of the matter is, it's just not. The price of chicken wings actually varies a lot throughout your typical year. It's in a cycle that seems to peak a week right before the Super Bowl as we Americans stock up for game day and then goes right back down shortly thereafter. In addition, while in 2019 wing meat was at an all-time high, the price of chicken wings did slump during the pandemic when all the wing places had to shut down. Sure, now that things have opened back up again, the price of wings is slowly starting to climb back up, but the most recent USDA data from July 2023 shows that chicken breast is still more expensive than chicken wing. So by using breast meat and calling it a wing, Buffalo Wild Wings and others are actually underselling what they're providing to consumers, a more expensive, more premium cut of meat. That right there makes it pretty hard to prove financial injury. As it is, maybe Buffalo Wild Wing customers should be thanking them for pulling this old bait and switch, because in this economy, the establishment is actually giving out the good stuff. Think about that the next time you're sitting down to place your wing order and considering which menu item is the better deal. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Boneless appetit. And hey, if you want to know why chicken wings are legally considered to be a sandwich, snack on the box over to your left. Or if you'd rather see if a hot wing can be hot enough to kill ya, that video is on the right. As always, subscribe to Food Theory for more weird wing content, and I'll see you all next week.